the rich are getting richer. They've been getting richer and they're going to continue getting richer. And by the end of this video, you are going to understand exactly what the rich are doing to become richer. That way you can use the same strategies that the rich use. This video will offend some people because I'm going to be brutally honest in this video. So if you're easily triggered, you might want to leave right now. But the real reason why rich people are rich is not because they own politicians. It's not because they scam people. It's not because they had rich parents. It's not because they had this gift that was given to them is because they understand two things. Now, I get it. You have some people that became rich because they had rich parents. They had things falling into their laps. They have won the lottery, but that is the outlier. That is not the rule. The reason why the rich are getting richer and why they're going to continue becoming richer is because they understand these two things. They understand education and they understand the system. And when the majority of people hear these two things, they're thinking something completely different than the way rich people interpret these two things. When the majority of people hear the word education, they think about the school system. Get a good degree, get a good job. But the rich don't care about that. How many rich people become rich because they have a good job or because they have a good degree? They're not thinking about the school system education. They're thinking about real education. They're thinking about financial education. And when it comes to the system, well, the majority of people have no idea of how our financial system works in the first place. So how are you going to benefit from the system if you don't even understand how the system works? Rich people work to understand the rules. That way they can win in the system. How and why did the rich become so much richer during the pandemic, during a time when nobody's working, during a time where the economy shut down, during a time where the government is working to help regular people stay alive? How did the rich become so much richer? Well, it's because they understand the system. Our system runs on spending and our government and our central banks are fueling their system. They want people to spend to stimulate the economy. Who understands how the economy works? Wealthy people. Rich people own a piece of the economy, so when people spend more money, the rich benefit. Now, you don't have to be a multimillionaire to benefit from this, but it's understanding how the system works. Every year for decades now, we have been seeing inflation. Inflation is when you print more money. Inflation is when the value of your dollar drops. Inflation is when the economy, our dollars, grow. Well, who does this benefit? It benefits the rich, it benefits the wealthy, it benefits the financially educated. Who does it not benefit? The poor, the middle class, and the financially uneducated. Before 2020, nobody had an idea of what inflation was. I had walked around the streets around the country asking people about what inflation was, and most people have no idea. What's inflation? Inflation could be your tire going flat because most people never see it happen. But this inflation is a silent tax. It makes regular people poorer and it also increases spending power because inflation is what? It's when you're increasing the amount of dollars out there. So for decades and decades, the government and the central bank have been working to increase the amount of dollars out there. Most people never notice it happen, but what does it do? It creates more dollars. It creates more ability for people to spend. You feel good because now you can buy more stuff. You feel good because you got a raise. You feel good because you're making more money. You're getting money from the government or you're getting money from somewhere and you have the ability to buy more stuff. When you buy more stuff, who's benefiting? It's the person who's selling the stuff. So our system is designed to encourage spending. And it's not just any spending, it's designed to encourage more and more spending each and every year. And then you gotta couple that with the education. Poor people work to pay their past bills. The middle class is working to buy nice things and the rich and the wealthy are working to buy assets. It's a completely different goal. Assets are the things that you buy that make money from the way the system works. When you go out and buy things, well now you're fueling the system. When you're going out to pay your previous bills, well now you're also fueling the system. This is where now you have three options. Option number one is you can shrug your shoulders and just ignore this. Option number two is you can kick, scream, cry, complain, be angry, and say we have to soak the rich. These are the two options that the majority of people will choose. Or you can pick option number three, which is you can understand the way these two things work and use them to your advantage. And I'm gonna say this one more time because the biggest 
issue that most people have when it comes to this is they assume that you have to be gifted, that you have to be a millionaire, that you need access to so much cash, that you need these special resources, these tools in order to do what the rich and the wealthy are doing to benefit from this and this, when in reality, it's not a tools issue, it's a mindset issue. You can start doing this with as little as $100, even as little as $10, and even in some instances, as little as $1. There's no reason why anybody cannot do this once you understand this and once you understand this. But it requires you to understand these two things and actually want to do something about it because the reality is this is the way the world works, period. This is happening, period. It's like gravity. You can fight gravity, you can hate gravity, or you can ignore gravity, or you can use gravity to your advantage. And this is where now you have to understand this and this is happening. This is already the way the world works. Now, what do you want to do? Do you want to win in this system and build that wealth for yourself? That way you can take better care of yourself, your family, and your community? Or do you want to continue to live your life the way that you are now? That's really up to you, and that decision is yours. We live in a free market, and it's a free country, so you can decide how you want to live, but this is already happening, and what I'm saying is be educated, that way you can make better decisions for yourself. Now, I know this makes a lot of people angry, but again, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to help you learn. Part of this education is building that discipline to understand how you use your money when you get paid. Poor people, the middle class, and rich people use their money when they get paid very differently. And so now, if you want to become wealthy, the first thing you have to do is understand, as soon as you get paid, what are you going to do with the money that you get when you get paid? Are you going to go out and buy a bunch of things? Are you going to use your cash to pay for all your previous purchases? Or are you going to use your cash to create more income for you in the future? If you want to become wealthy and do what the wealthy do, you have to use your cash as a tool today to create more income in the future. That means buying assets. What are some of these assets? Stocks, real estate, businesses, startups, loans, and potentially an alternative investment. When you invest in the stock market, you are buying companies that are born out and producing products. The government sends out $2,000 checks along with unemployment checks to everybody and now people have cash in their pockets and what do they do? They go to Amazon, they go to Lululemon, they go to Walmart, they go to Target, they go to the store and they spend this money. So now who makes the money? Amazon, Lululemon, Walmart, Chipotle, Target, these are the corporations that are making the money and the people who own these companies saw huge increases in revenue because people had more money to spend. So who benefited? It's the owners of these companies. And all of the companies that are named are publicly traded companies, meaning they trade on the stock market. Meaning anybody with as little as $100 can start investing and owning a piece of these companies. And when you own a piece of these companies, well, when other people spend money there and these companies make bigger profits, you benefit as well. But the reason why so many people lose money in the stock market is because then they start throwing money into it without having the right education, and then they get emotional, they panic, they sell at a loss, or they get greedy and then they start using margin and then they start trading without understanding what they're doing and then they end up losing money. When in reality, if you want to make money and build real wealth in the stock market, you have to be a long-term investor, not a trader. There's a whole bunch of stock market education on YouTube. Go watch some of that. Second, real estate. Rich people love owning real estate. When I talk about owning real estate, it's different for a rich person and the regular person because for the regular person, when they think about owning real estate, all they think about is owning the home that they live in. But what wealthy people are working for is owning real estate that they can rent out that produces cash flow. Because that type of investment real estate not only has some of the biggest and best tax breaks that our tax code has to offer, but it's also a great hedge for your money because now it's a great way to fight inflation. And third, it also produces cash flow. So this is what wealthy people are working to own. So as real estate prices go up, will you also benefit? Does this mean that real estate prices only go up? No. We have seen this happen in the past. Just think of the 2008 crash. However, just like with stocks, if you are a long-term real estate investor and you're looking in good areas where people want to live, where you have growing demand, where businesses want to be, well, not only can you benefit from growing real estate prices, but you can also benefit from growing rental prices. But it requires, again, that education. Just like anything else, investing has risks. You are never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you should never blindly Listen to a random guy on YouTube and why you should always do your own due diligence. Third, you can invest in your own business. This can create some of the biggest and best returns possible, 
but it's also some of the riskiest returns. You have some of the wealthiest people in the world who became what they are today because they built some of the biggest businesses in the world. Now again, you don't need a ton of money to start building businesses. I started the Minority Mindset Companies and our following companies with less than $500. And I say $500 just to give me a lot of cushion and buffer, but I know it was a lot less than $500. I started making videos with my phone, and then I use my YouTube videos to then fuel some of the businesses that I own right now. The company that I talk about the most on YouTube is Briefs Media. We have two free newsletters. One is Market Briefs, which is for investors, which keeps you up to date on what's happening in the financial markets. That way you can make better and smarter decisions with your money. And the second is Business Briefs. This is a newsletter for entrepreneurs and business owners where we keep you up to date on what's happening with business trends, entrepreneurial trends, innovation, and funding. That way you can make better decisions in your business. Both of these are completely free and I was able to build these thanks to the initial growth from my following here on YouTube. Now, if you haven't joined either one of these newsletters yet, I highly recommend you do so because it's completely free for you. And I'll put the links to how you can join down in the description below. But this is where just understanding that business doesn't mean you need a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or a thousand dollars to start. You can start with as little as a couple hundred dollars, but you need the right education. You need the drive. You need the hustle. YouTube has made so much education completely free. And then you can advance to reading books. And then you can start buying classes. And then you can get coaching. But it's all progressive. You don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars on coaching that you don't have. First, start. Make mistakes. Losing is how you succeed. The more you lose, the more you're going to win. So keep trying, keep failing, because that's what's going to take you one step further. Then you can invest in startups. If you've ever seen Shark Tank before, the whole idea is you have these sharks who are investing in startup ideas. And you might thought, man, I wish I could be a shark one day. Well, you can now invest in startups with as little as a couple hundred dollars. There are so many different sites out there that allow you to start crowdfunding and invest in these startup companies. However, it's very risky. The majority of startups will fail. That means nine out of 10 of the investments that you make will fail statistically. However, if you can hit a good startup, you can see a huge return on that one company and the goal is that return on that one company should make up for all of those losses. Now, if you are willing to do that research and invest in startups and are willing to take on their risk, there's a handful of startup crowdfunding platforms out there. I am not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just telling you who they are. One of them is Republic. One of them is Start Engine. One of them is WeFunder. I do have to let you know that I am an investor in WeFunder, but do your own research and see whichever one you like. Then when it comes to loans, you can do what the banks do and lend out some of your own money. In this case, you're not owning an asset like you do with stocks or real estate or with a business. You are just putting your money out and getting a return on your cash. So it's a little bit different. With real estate, you're getting a return on your cash but you also own the asset. So you can see returns on the asset in addition to your cash flow. However, you can also lose value on the asset. With loans, you don't own any asset. You're just lending your money out and hoping to get that money back. So there's a lot of regulations involved with loans, but I know some people that are making a great living just doing this. And finally, you have your alternative investments. These can be more of your speculative type investments, although your startups are also speculative investment. But now you can invest in things like potentially cryptocurrency, potentially playing cards or whatever experience you have. There's a lot of different alternative investments out there. I don't recommend you have this be a big piece of your portfolio. Make this a speculative piece of your portfolio. This where you can have some fun. If you like researching other different things, you can invest into it here. But again, it doesn't need to be your whole portfolio. The key here now, what every wealthy person does is when they get paid, they prioritize buying these before they go out and buy their cars and big homes and they buy all the nice stuff. They're buying these before they buy the liabilities. And the liabilities for the majority of people are the things that make them look rich. So it's kind of ironic. The things that make you look rich are the things that keep you from becoming actually rich. But if you want to actually become rich, you have to kind of look broke because you got to buy the things that make you look broke because none of these things are going to make you look rich right now. But then if you continue to do this, you put in a decade of sacrifice, well, then your assets will be able to pay for your lifestyle. And once you do that, now you've achieved real financial freedom because if you can produce enough cash flow from these things, now that cash flow can fund your lifestyle. I love investing for cash flow because your cash flow funds your guac flow because if you can create cash flow, now you can live your life and buy what you want 
and not have to worry about it because next month you're going to get another cash flow check. Along with this education piece is just understanding the fact of the matter that the majority of people are going to be jealous. The majority of people are going to complain. The majority of people are going to hate. The majority of people are going to talk about whatever it is that you do. It's a fact. Jealousy is bred in our system. It's bred in our culture because we have so much insecurities in our own lives. And when we have these own insecurities, we love trying to bring other people down. Just understand that this is the fact of life. People are going to hate you no matter what you do. So you might as well give them a good reason to hate and become successful yourself by understanding the way these things work. People will laugh when you drive that beat up car. People will not understand why you're sacrificing the vacation. People will not understand why you do the things that you do, but they're going to talk crap no matter what you do. So you might as well become extra successful. That way you can have all the nice things and give them even more things to talk about. And then of course you have the system. These two things go hand in hand and this is understanding the way that our system runs. We live in a capitalist system. That means that there's two ways that you can make money. You can make money from your labor or you can make money from your capital. And this is one of those things that I wish all of us were taught when we were in grade school because I had no idea. I didn't even hear the word capitalism until I think I was in college because I never understood what that concept was. I always thought that the only way that you can make money was by going to work and getting a paycheck. I didn't realize that you could invest your money and create cash flow. I didn't realize what an asset was. I didn't learn these things until I started reading books. But in a capitalist system, there's two ways that you can make money. You can make money from your labor or you can make money from your capital. Your labor is when you go to work and you get paid. Your capital is when you invest your money. Wealthy people don't care about the labor income. They worry about their capital income because that labor income can go away. If you break your leg, if you get sick, if you can't go to work, you don't get paid. Your capital doesn't need days off. Your capital doesn't need sick days and your capital doesn't need time to go to the bathroom so it can work when you're not working. And this is what wealthy people are working for. Now this requires a sacrifice because now you have to sacrifice the income that you get from your labor. That way you have capital to actually invest. But once you understand it, now you can use it to your advantage. And then you can understand that our system runs on spending. And our government with the Federal Reserve Bank is going to continue producing inflation. They have been doing this forever and they're going to continue doing this. And when you produce more inflation, again, it benefits the asset owners. But it disproportionately hurts the people who don't own assets. This is the fact of the way that our system works. We've been seeing it happen forever now. So you want to be able to benefit from the system, but the only way you can do that is if you own the assets. And the only way you can own the assets is if you sacrifice some of the income from your labor today. Most of us are not given a million dollars to start investing. Most of us are not given this free handout to go out and start doing this. We have to start from nothing. We have to start by working, and then you have to start by taking a piece of that income and starting to invest it. Now, there's there's three ways that you can increase the returns that you get. You can increase how much money you invest, you can increase the amount of risk you take, or you can increase how much time you have your money invested. Now, we can't change how much time we have left in our lives. So the best time to start is today. This leaves us with the risk and this leaves us with how much money you can invest. Now, if you want to invest more money, you're going to need more money. That means you can work harder at your job or you can work to create your own income. If you're not willing to start your own business, if you're not willing to start your own side hustle, then you're going to have to do it through your own job or through your own career to earn more money. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You can try to advance in your career. You can get a certificate. You can get another degree. You can do something to earn more money so you have more money to invest. This leaves your risk tolerance. The higher your risk, the higher potential return. That doesn't mean to go out and start trading, but the more you learn, the more involved you can be with your investments. There's different ways to invest in stocks. You can be a passive stock market investor where you just throw your money into ETFs, which is great for the vast majority of people. But some of you might want to be more involved where now you're researching companies, you're listening to earnings calls, and you want to invest and find undervalued companies. You can get much higher returns here but you also have higher risks. So now understanding how you can increase your return by increasing your risk, but also decreasing your probability of losing money by having that right financial education. The rich will continue to become richer because they understand these two things and they will always continue to work to buy assets. They're gonna always work to own more of that means of production because they understand the way the system works. They understand this and then they use this income to buy more of these. It becomes a self-perpetuating 
wealth building spiral and you have to get started somewhere. That means now starting to get educated that we can use the system to your advantage. Indian people are notorious for being cheap and it is very hard to break out of this because you have this generational mindset of being cheap where I'm not gonna pay money for anything. I'm gonna try to get everything for myself, nothing for anybody else. Well, I'm gonna tell you this, it's very hard to progress and become extremely successful. I'm not talking about a few hundred